Many students who take Chinese proficiency exams say that they understand the text but can't read fast enough. Is that a valid complaint? And how fast do you have to read to pass the HSK or TOCFL? Hello and welcome to the Hacking Chinese podcast. This week, I'm going to talk about reading speed and proficiency exams. This involves a certain amount of data on character counts and reading speed. So, if you prefer to see these things in written form, please refer to the article linked to in the description. Let's get started. I remember the first time I took an advanced proficiency test in Chinese. I remember sitting down with the reading part of the exam, starting to work my way through the questions. The first section consisted of short sentences with gaps, and I felt pretty confident that I got most of them right. Then came shorter paragraphs followed by reading comprehension questions. Then longer and longer texts with more questions. I've kept working my way through the text, understanding most of what I read, and thinking that I got most of the questions right. Then, what? Only five minutes remaining? But I'm not even halfway through yet. How important is reading speed on tests like HSK and TOCFL? I don't remember what score I got, but I surely didn't pass. I found this a bit upsetting because I did actually understand the texts and got most of the questions I answered right. But that's no good if you only manage to answer less than half of the questions in the time you have available. I thought this was very unfair. Was this supposed to be a test of reading comprehension or reading speed? That was more than ten years ago, and the test was the test of Chinese proficiency as a foreign language (TOCFL). Today I'm older and hopefully a bit wiser, so today I'm going to discuss the matter of reading speed on proficiency exams, including both Hanyu Shuiping Kao Shi and Test of Chinese as a Foreign Language (TOCFL). Reading comprehension is usually defined as the ability to process text in a given language. Understand what it means and connect it with things you already know in a meaningful way. On exams, mere understanding is not enough because you also need to express that understanding in some way or form, usually through multiple choice questions. Speed is normally not mentioned, but from a practical standpoint, it's almost always a factor. Can you say that you can read in Chinese if it takes you an hour to read a page? How would exams be organized if students could spend as much time as they wanted on each part? Speed is also a reasonable factor to check how good you are at reading. This might be more problematic if we're talking about very high speeds and native speakers, but I think it's safe to say that someone who can read a 500 character story in five minutes and get all the questions right is better at reading than someone who also gets all the questions right but needs 15 minutes to do so. Maybe I would tell my younger self that yes. It's great that you could read the text and understand it. That's the first step. But in order to demonstrate that you have the reading level needed to pass the exam, you need to automate the reading process to such an extent that you can do the same thing but twice or three times as fast. By the time you've read enough Chinese to do that, your comprehension will also be much, much better than it is now. Patience, young grasshopper. So, how quickly do you have to read to have a chance of passing these exams? This is very hard to answer precisely, but I'll give you an idea below. This is not very fair because different parts of the exam requires different kinds of reading. For example, reading one sentence in the middle of a long story is considerably easier and faster than reading one isolated sentence. Filling in eight blanks in a paragraph with eight given words takes much longer than simply choosing the best alternative for eight gaps in eight separate sentences, and so on. Hence, minimum reading speed. If you read slower than this, you will stand no chance of even finishing the exam. Naturally, not finishing does not mean that you won't pass, which is quite important. How difficult the exams are is not only regulated by the time available and the texts themselves, but also how much you have to get right in order to pass. This is not meant to be a comparison of difficulty. Let's start with HSK. This table shows、uh, each test level. How many characters there are in the exam? How many minutes you have available, and your reading speed. HSK one, two hundred and fifteen characters, seventeen minutes, thirteen characters per minute. HSK two, six hundred and twenty-one characters, twenty-two minutes, twenty-eight characters per minute. HSK three, one thousand two hundred and seventeen characters, thirty minutes, so forty-one characters per minute. HSK four. 
2342 characters, 40 minutes, 59 characters per minute. HSK5, 4593 characters, 45 minutes, 102 characters per minute. HSK6, 6521 characters, 50 minutes, 130 characters per minute. Mock exams were taken from the official website along with test times. I calculated the number of characters by using an online tool, including everything in the exam except the cover page, which is shown before the exam actually starts. 130 characters per minute is a significant speed for second language learners who don't read a lot. And remember, you need more than that to actually finish, because time is used to answer questions, reread certain parts, mark answers on the exam, and so on. How fast do you read? Take any digital text, time yourself reading it, and divide the total number of characters by how many minutes you needed to finish. Don't read so fast that you don't understand what you're reading. These exams will deliberately trick you into giving the wrong answer if you don't read carefully, so skimming won't really work. Now it's TOCFL time. So TOCFL novice. 822 characters, 25 minutes. 33 characters per minute. TOCFL Band A, 2,710 characters, 60 minutes, 45 characters per minute. TOCFL Band B, 5,375 characters, 60 minutes, 90 characters per minute. TOCFL Band C, 6,281 characters, 60 minutes, 104 characters per minute. The procedure here is the same, but the structure of the exam is different. There are three proper bands, not including novice, but each of these are then divided into two levels depending on your score. So if you just barely passed band C, that's equivalent to TOCFL level 5, whereas you need to pass with a big margin to get the level 6 certificate. When counting the characters here, I manually estimated the amount included in pictures, ads, screenshots, posters, etc., which couldn't easily be copied and pasted. Okay, I get it, speed is a problem, and now what? I bet that reading speed is or has been an issue for almost all learners of Chinese, possibly with the exception of Japanese students, because they are used to reading characters already. Japanese classmates have always outclassed me on written exams while performing worse on listening and speaking. Improving reading speed in Chinese is not easy. Going from 50 to 100 characters per minute is fine, just read more. Graded readers, comics, subtitles, whatever floats your boat. From 100 to 150 is a whole different story, requiring much more reading than you will ever get in class. Increasing beyond that up to 200 to 250 characters per minute, which would allow you to actually finish these exams on time, with full comprehension and time left to answer questions, is a long, hard slog. Approaching a fairly slow native reading speed of, say, 300 to 400 characters per minute requires years of reading. Educated native speakers can skim much, much faster than this, a skill which is even harder to acquire as a second language learner. I have already discussed how to improve reading speed in a separate article, so if you're curious about what's slowing you down, check it out. Chinese Reading Speed Revisited What's your experience of reading speed on proficiency tests? I've shared my experience and thoughts about reading speed, but what do you think? Which tests have you taken, and how much of a problem was reading speed compared to comprehension of the texts you were reading? Leave a comment below. Thank you for tuning in to the Hacking Chinese podcast. If you like this episode, please share it. More information and inspiration about learning and teaching Chinese can be found at hackingchinese.com. See you in the next episode, and until then, good luck with your studies!